Hi, I'm Roland and welcome to Spice and Pens. Today, I'm happy and honoured to partner with Cod Life, a Singapore homegrown brand to bring you a series of confinement food recipes. These recipes are extremely easy to prepare and super duper yummy. I've also invited Dr. Wong Boy Boy, Singapore's very own baby whisperer, to explain to you why these dishes are good for you. In case you haven't heard, Cod Life operates the largest network of cod blood and tissue banks in Asia. They have a huge processing and storage facility in Singapore and in five other countries, serving more than half a million parents in Asia. Expectant parents today are storing their baby's cod blood and cod tissue so that their family will have more treatment options in the future. Stem cells that can be found in cod blood have been used to treat many conditions such as leukemia. There are also many ongoing clinical trials in the world now looking at using cod blood and cod tissue for more treatments. If you or someone in the family is expecting a baby now, consider storing the cod blood and cod tissue for your baby and your family. Dr. Wong, would you like to let us know the benefit of ginger fried rice? Ginger fried rice is a daily or basic food, very easy, very simple. And let's talk about carbo, that is rice. Carbo is an energy food. Nursing mother, they do feel hungry all the time. And that's why they need rice, you know, energy to help them to provide that chi to nursing the babies all the time. They may get a bit tired, so that's why they feel hungry, they're tired, they're also thirsty. So that's why we also brew some tea for them, right, to balance out the electrolyte itself. You do know that mother, after delivery, the appetite is not good. At the same time, digestion is no good. So fried rice is easily digested. And then we add in some of the vegetables, which actually also balance out the fibers itself. Mm -hmm. and then you also add in some meat, which is very important protein, help the mother tissue repair after deliveries. The eggs you add in actually is very wholesome. It's full of choline, which is very important for the baby's brain DHA and also simple, easily digested. We do know the first week we cannot give too much strong tonic itself, tonicify the mother because the placenta site is still bleeding. Then we don't want to give her too much, then increase the vascularity, eventually mother may bleed heavier. Mm -hmm. A moderation of ginger help the mother to rip in and as I say, the goodness before, anti-inflammatory and aid digestion, antioxidant is good. But we must not give too much because it may jeopardize the baby jaundice. Mm -hmm. You do know the first 10 days are rolling. Baby tend to have a bit of physiological jaundice. And then uh, whatever you eat in excessive form, and then it will actually transmit it through the immature liver. And the baby may not have the, you know, Chinese TCM believe in qi come from liver, may not have the energy, not only breaking down the serum berubin, which causes jaundice, then whatever excessive may be a toxin. So you may overload the system. So that's why ginger will not cause jaundice, but ginger in an excessive form can overload the baby liver system. So, you know, may jeopardize the jaundice level for a bit longer. Oh, I see. Um, I will start cooking now and I'll see you around soon. Thank you. I love to watch you cooking. Thank you. Now we are going to fry the ginger first. Heat up a pan. Add in one tablespoon of sesame oil. Swirl the oil around a little bit. Now I'm frying this at low heat. You don't have to wait for the pan to really heat up because we want the fragrance coming out from the young ginger over here. I have with me over here 50 grams of young ginger chopped up. Put them in. We just need to fry until we can smell the fragrance. This will take a little bit of time because I'm using medium low or low heat over here. Now the reason I'm doing so is because I don't want to burn the ginger, I just want the aroma coming out from the ginger. Now some of you might ask what's the difference between young ginger and old ginger. Normally for stir frying, we like to use young ginger. For stew, for soup, we like to use old ginger. Um, old ginger taste is a little bit sharper and it's more spicy. Young ginger is less spicy but it's very fragrant, so it's very suitable for stir frying. Okay, now I can smell the ginger. It's a very very nice fragrant smell. I'm going to add in my rice. I have with me over here two bowls of cooked rice, approximately 300 grams. I'm just going to add them in. 
Now we need to fry the rice until it's a little bit dry, right? Don't chop it, okay? Just press it down so that they will spread out. In fried rice, you want it to be li li fen ming, which means that you can see almost every grain on its own. Now we add in our egg. I have with me over here two eggs beaten. Just spread them over the eggs. Now I'm going to set the egg first before I stir fry them again. This will take approximately 10 seconds or so. Now I'm not changing the heat. I'm still using medium low or low heat right now. Once the egg has set, we will stir fry this now. Smells really good. Once you mix them up well, we'll add in our seasoning now. I'm adding in two tablespoons of light soya sauce, less sodium, and one tablespoon of hua tiao jiu or Chinese cooking wine. Mix them up well. Just fry them a while until they are a little bit dry. And this will be very fragrant. Now we'll add in one stalk of spring onion, chopped up. Just spread them onto the rice. Turn off the heat and you can serve this now. And now the ginger fried rice with sesame oil is done. Let's have a taste. Mm. Very fragrant. It has this very distinct ginger taste. Very warming to the body. Very nice. And a very nice light aroma of the sesame oil. This is really good. So before I go, if you're pregnant now, I would like to remind you to consider cod blood banking with cod life. You have only one chance to do so.